All right, we are good to get started. Uh, could somebody please pray for our very first session today? Okay, yes, uh, Sitkin, please go ahead. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for the day, the new day you have given us, Lord. Thank you for the privilege as we are going to learn from your word, Lord. Whatever we will be learning, Lord, that it should be not be just kept in our hearts or our minds, Lord. It should be manifested in our daily lives, Lord, wherever we go, whatever we do, Lord. Your godly character should be visible in us, Lord. And the things we are learning, Lord, it should be used in the expansion of your kingdom, Lord. Thank you for the wisdom you have given us, Lord. Guide us and help us to understand each of the perspectives of your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sitkanu. Uh, I hope uh, all of you have uh, downloaded the notes which I have posted in the classwork uh, stream. You could uh, download that because we are going to use that as we go forward in this session and all the coming sessions. So uh, please use that as a reference. Uh, and uh, with regard to your assignments, uh, I have assessments, graded assessments. Uh, I have made a mention in the notes itself. Basically, we will have uh, something like a uh, three graded assessment uh, scoring for this course. You'll have uh, one assessment in February, one in March, one in April, 30, 30 and 40%. Okay, So that's how it will go. Um, and uh, we're all aware that our attendance is important and also uh, up to, uh, you know, 35% minimum scoring is, is uh, very much important. Okay, so uh, please make sure that uh, you attempt all the assessments. Uh, that way you will be in a better position to clear the course. All right. Uh, all right. So let's get into our subject here on believer's authority. So uh, before we get started, uh, I just wanted to hear from all of us. Uh, what, what do you know about believer's authority? What is your understanding? Uh, if you could share, that will be nice. Uh, and with that, we can begin the class. Believer's authority is the power given by God to the Christians. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yes, that's true. It's the power given by God to the Christians. Yes. Uh, what else do we know about believer's authority? Um, as per Luke 10, 19, we have been given authority over everything, mm. uh, all the works of the enemy. Mm -hmm. True. So uh, that puts us in a position of victory because we can overcome the enemy. So we've been given authority over all the works of the enemy. That's true. Uh, anything else that you want to add to that? Ma'am, by the God, we are also given the authority. The believers have authority that what will tie, we will tie in the earth, it will be tied up in heaven. Okay, okay. So you mean to say what we bind, right? Uh, what yes, we restrict. Yeah, I forgot yeah. that word. Yeah, no, that's okay. But that, that is what you mean. So that's true. Yeah, whatever we are going to restrict or limit uh, on the earth here, uh, it will be, or, or in other words, Whatever we uh, we know that, right? Like we, we discussed about it originally, whatever heaven doesn't allow, those things we bind or those things we restrict. True. So we can use our ability to do that. All right. So good. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyone else wanted to add to it? I thought I heard someone. Okay, maybe not. So we have a good uh, uh, understanding already about believer's authority. All of what you shared uh, is correct. Okay, and we will we will add to that as we discuss uh, on the subject of believer's authority. So in this course, uh, what we will study is we will uh, study about the authority that a believer has, uh, and we will also study about the victory of the cross you know how jesus has won the victory and what it means uh, for a believer 
so we'll understand about the victory of the cross and also uh, i'm sure many of us would agree that when we are in battle it is uh, necessary for us to understand our enemy now we don't need to be obsessed about what the enemy is going to do what are his tactics but in a healthy way to be aware that this is how the enemy comes in you know if your house uh, the home that you live if it's having repeated intrusions through a particular door you know that that door is a problem i have to fix it and then when you fix that door you know, the intruder cannot come in anymore so to that extent you are aware of who the enemy is what the enemy is up to uh, and you know that should be sufficient so we will be looking at the origin of satan where did he come from uh, uh, what does his kingdom look like uh, who helps him you know we'll talk a little bit about uh, the demons that are part of satan's kingdom how do they function so just so we know how to deal with the kingdom of the enemy okay uh, and uh, we always say that you know, we should not give undue focus to satan uh, and uh, his workings okay just to an extent for our understanding uh, for us to live victorious and for us to uh, minister deliverance to people we need to know about satan okay so uh, that also will be covered in this course and towards the end of the course we will talk very uh, uh, in a detailed manner about the process of deliverance how can we go about uh, casting out demons uh, you know effectively with the authority that we have been given so in a detailed manner we will have a discussion then and all of this is definitely going to help us to live our lives in a victorious way um, just a usual lifestyle and of course as john said you we overcome the works of the evil one so let's begin so in our notes uh, we begin with the concept of authority okay uh, now authority is something we all uh, come across in various ways in everyday living um, for example you know in in a house you have parents you have elder folk who have a certain degree of authority uh, over the family whatever they say uh, that uh, is a given priority we also understand governmental authority on a daily basis right maybe your uh, uh, electric bill person just came and uh, uh, he he took your meter reading you have to pay the bills right so the government has certain rules in place certain laws uh, certain uh, you know ways of uh, certain things that we must adhere to as citizens so we follow that governmental authority we understand that there is traffic rules if we are traveling and there uh, again you know these rules are by the authority and we know how to follow those rules uh, ev nearly everyone even in school we learn it the first thing or oh, what is a red light what is a green light what is an amber light so we learn these things uh, and we do have an idea of what authority really is uh, but we are going to delve a little deeper into uh, authority uh, so that we will have a better understanding of the biblical uh, believers authority that we are speaking about so uh, when we talk about the concept of authority uh, we need to understand that authority is usually vested upon someone if we go back to uh, uh, maybe our school days you know, we used to have a school captain and you know house captains so one or two students among all the students would be chosen and they would be what we term vested with authority so they would have uh, uh, this name given to them as a let's say a school captain vested with authority and when one is vested with authority uh, it also comes with certain rights and privileges so the captain might have the authority to walk into uh, the staff room or the principal's office uh, more freely than other students in order to communicate with the teachers uh, the the uh, 
a captain might have the authority to come and speak you know from the from the stage uh, so that he he can talk about certain rules and programs that are coming up and things like that not everyone can do that that is a right given to the captain so in this manner when authority is vested on someone we have to understand that it comes along with some privileges and rights so uh, we are talking about all this so that we understand our authority as believers better so then this means that when you and i have authority as believers we have certain privileges and we have certain rights okay which someone who is uh, not in the kingdom of god cannot enjoy so uh, we have uh, we have rights we have privileges now authority uh, also helps us to influence others okay uh, it helps us influence other people's actions or their decisions now take for example the government when the government says okay weekends because of the covid situation let's go in for a weekend lockdown we will uh, not have gatherings and things like that so they are coming from a place of understanding to help the people and uh, this decision is going to influence the actions of the uh, citizens obviously we will not have gatherings we will stay home uh, you know and make all our choices uh, related to the rule which has been given to us so anyone who is in a place of authority has if you want to call it uh, it's a privilege you know you you can influence other people's actions so as believers you know we keep saying this we say oh you are salt you are light okay uh, you are the fragrance you are ambassadors so what 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 is it that you and i can do we have the authority to influence positively for the glory of god okay now when we look at this there is a kingdom of darkness which exists and uh, it's true that satan uh, is constantly trying to influence you know people uh, circumstances events satan will do his part to influence but here is the other side of things you and i as believers we can also influence positively because we have been given the authority of god so authority is something that has been vested or given okay uh, and it comes with privileges and rights god has given us the authority we have privileges and rights and the second thing is we have the ability to influence so authority has the ability to influence now moving along you know uh, we see here that uh, the exercise of authority need not always depend on the ability of the person a very good example of this is uh, an in a uh, traffic police you know take for example a traffic police all of us whichever country we come from i'm sure we we do know uh, who a traffic police is now what if the traffic police is a well built uh, individual uh, the moment you look at the traffic police you feel like obeying the traffic rules that would work well isn't it you look at the traffic police oh if if i don't do this if i'm not on the right lane what if he gives me a ticket or worse still right something else he does to me i don't want that let me follow the rules what if this traffic police is not well built imagine you know you uh, someone uh, who has been in the service for many years maybe it's an old person elderly person uh, or or maybe not an elderly person but you know you know what i mean right like they've been in the service for many years and they're not one of the young ones and when you look at the traffic police uh, he or she looks very weak and tired uh, and sickly would you still follow the traffic rules what do you think class if the traffic police is not big and mighty will you still follow the traffic rules yes because of the 
<clears throat> because of the authority that he has. Exactly, exactly. Thank you, thank you, uh, Brother Isaac. So we see here that authority need, I mean, the capability of the individual in a sense does not matter because the authority which has been vested on that individual uh, is what is considered. Okay, so even if the traffic police is weak, at the end of the day, that's a traffic police. And we will look at the uniform and respect the uniform, right? We will respect the authority that the individual has over their lives. Now, how does this work in a believer's life? Well, we may say a lot of things like, oh, I don't have much experience in prayer or I don't have much experience in ministry. I don't know how to do this. Or, you know, we could talk about our own experience and put ourselves down, but that does not take away from the kind of authority that God has given you and me. Right? When we are a believer, we have been vested with authority. And when the kingdom of darkness looks at us, it's the same reaction that we have to a maybe a weak looking uh, traffic police. The weakness doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, so and so is a, uh, a person vested with authority. And so we have authority. right? And it really is not depending on our capabilities we as long as we have the authority you know we are able to stop the the, the work of the enemy we are able to uh, you know do great exploits for the kingdom of god and that's how authority works now in some cases okay, authority can be earned and we see this especially in the workplace you might have someone who starts out in a, um, a very basic position okay, of a, a clerical position. One might just start off there. But as years go by and uh, uh, the office folks see that this person is doing good work from the clerical role, you know, maybe they, they grow up into a more of a managerial role okay, at some point. So at that point, they are vested with authority as a manager. So authority also comes because uh, of the, the growth. So an individual can earn the authority. So in some ways, you know, as, as believers in Christ Jesus, you know, as uh, we progress, have you heard people say this, oh, this, uh, this uh, uh, person, they've really grown in authority when it comes to uh, healing. You know, this person has really grown uh, in their authority when it comes to ministering the word of God. Not that authority was not there. In the first place, it was already there. However, you know, it's just that a greater bearing, a stronger bearing on things one uh, was able to get as they went along sincerely, you know, growing and following after in that path. So sometimes authority uh, comes by the growth. So uh, in, in other words, in our notes, it is put as it is earned. Individuals earn it. Okay. Uh, and we see a lot of this in the workplace. Now, basically, the kind of authority that we are talking about in our course is the authority which we have been vested with. Okay, uh, which Christ has given us. So we will limit ourselves to uh, that conversation. Okay, moving on. Uh, when we talk about authority, we also have to understand the realms of authority. Okay, realms of authority simply means that there are boundaries. For example, uh, if there is, uh, if we have a manager at work, the manager can tell us how to perform better in the given assignment but we would say that the manager has no authority or no maybe some put it this way no right to uh, dictate how i should spend my money you know, how i should spend my time uh, how i who my friends should be because the realm is very different in the workspace yeah in the in the work area the manager has authority over me 
but when it comes to my personal space the manager has no authority over me so there are what we call as the realms of authority even when we talk about the kingdom of god uh, when we exercise our authority we have to be careful you know uh, and we i think we have touched on this when we spoke about prayer we said that when uh, there is a family the the parents exercise great authority over their children but the same set of parents they cannot go around you know instructing uh, and dictating terms to other people's children because those children will come under their parental authority so there are boundaries there are realms of authority that we have to understand so even when we use our authority as believers we have to be mindful of these boundaries and the realms in which we function all right a little more about authority authority uh, many a time is associated with a uh, with the badge or a symbol so when we talked about the traffic police remember i said that one is we know so and so is a traffic police now uh, if someone has been uh, in or you know standing at a uh, at the traffic lights for many years even if they're not wearing the uniform sometimes we understand oh this person has been here so we have to follow uh, if they say stop we have to stop but in general when we look at a traffic police we would look for their uniform okay so it's their uniform that speaks for them so there is a badge or a symbol of authority which they carry uh, which you know tells us to respect that person so uh, when you look at us in the in the kingdom of god you know we are the redeemed of the lord we are the redeemed of the lord we are purchased with his blood uh we are children of god we uh, have been given that authority by god so god recognizes us as his children but also the kingdom of darkness or when we say kingdom of darkness basically we are referring to satan and his demons so when they think about us they too can see us as oh they are the redeemed they are uh, uh, covered by the blood of christ so there is there is something you know upon us that is uh, uh showing us that we carry that authority okay so symbol or uh, uh, a badge sometimes refers to represents the authority which one carries okay and here is the next thing about authority you would all agree with me we can have the authority uh but never use it okay and that is the uh, sad part when one has the authority and we never use it you know it's uh, told about uh, elephants that are trained by uh, mahots not just here in india but even in other countries it is said that when the elephant is brought in they usually chain the elephant and uh, it's not able to remove the chain because it's it's uh, you know it's young and smaller but as the elephant grows uh the trainer uh, kind of uh, uh gets the elephant to think throughout that it's not able to break the chain so uh it it's surprising that fully grown elephants as well even though they can break the chain they never really do it because in their training in their minds uh they they think throughout their lives that hey i can't do this i was not able to do it earlier and i'm not able to do it now so what's happening uh, is there power is there strength in that elephant yes there is but it's going unused it's not able to use it because of the uh, mentality that i can't do it but who told you that you can't do it you already have what it takes right so when it comes to a believer you know we uh, hear this a lot from believers pastor you come pastor you pray uh, i can't pray i can't face the devil or uh, you know i i can't cast this demon out or you know i can't do this i can't do that uh, i don't have the authority 
i can't face the the kingdom of darkness or this is happening that is happening but you know when we study god's word uh, the bible very clearly shows us that every child of god every believer has been given god's authority okay and isn't it so sad when we don't recognize it maybe one of the reasons why we don't use it is because we don't recognize it okay but when we do recognize it and we know that i have the authority and we don't use it that's sort of funny like why would we not use it when we know that we have the authority so it's unfortunate you know one can have the authority but may never use it but that brings about you know a lot of uh, um uh, sort of you know you could say uh, wasted time wasted energy uh, for example you know if a if a parent could instruct the child hey don't go out you know or always wear your mask and go out it would probably help the child it would prevent the child from catching an infection you know in in the current scenario but what if a parent never uses their authority and says yeah you do whatever you want never instructs the child you know the child is just doing whatever they want to do and comes home with an infection right what the parent could have done they could have used the authority they have the authority but they did not use it okay so in the same way when it comes to us as believers for our family you know our authority that we can use for our family the authority that we can use for our personal lives maybe satan is coming uh, uh, going about tempting us causing us to fall but we can rise up and say hey you know i have the authority you know you cannot tempt me it is written in god's word so i'm using my authority to overcome the 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 methods the tactics of the devil maybe in my circumstances you know satan is trying to interfere but as sitkenu said you know i take my authority i bind okay you're trying to do this create confusion satan no i bind you know every spirit of confusion in the name of jesus what am i doing i'm taking authority i know i have an influence i use the influence how about on a on my local church i speak protection over my local church i speak the provision of god over my local church you know things like that so whatever level of capacity you have uh, you can use it whatever level of capacity i have i can use it and it's only when we use our authority that it is uh, uh, benef- beneficial for the um, kingdom of god okay so that's a little bit of understanding about authority and using the authority and uh, you know we we will also uh, build further on this so why should we learn about all this you know spiritual authority and all of that uh, okay any idea why do you think we should learn how is it helpful um according to me it will enable us to live a victorious christian life excellent yeah that's true help us to live a victorious christian life yes yeah anything else how how else can that help us the more and more we come to know our authority and who we are it helps us to always stay in faith and uh, yeah that's what i want to yeah wonderful so it uh, helps us stay in faith okay uh, and yeah no matter what we are going through we can we can be firm in, uh, in god great wonderful answer yeah anything else how how would it help to know our authority yeah it can help us to operate in the position of strength mm. because we already like he last said Yeah. if you have if you have the authority and you don't know how to use it there uh, is like a weight of energy <laughs> so yeah if we know if we learn to know how to operate with our authority we will operate from a position of strength thank you yes, yes. thank you thank you brother isaac that's very true so yes all of these um, all of these answers are uh, correct you know we are able to live a victorious life we are able to stay strong in our faith because 
in this life, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a uh, easy ride, isn't it? There will be challenges as long as we are here on the earth, but we can stay firm, we can stay anchored um, and be steady in our Christian life. Uh, and as uh, Brother Isaac also said, you know, that when we have the authority, you know, we, uh, when we study about authority, we also know how to really use it. Okay, so these are all reasons why uh, it's good to study about the authority. Now, uh, there is a uh, 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 like a man of God who uh, shared of a vision that he had. Yeah, and in that vision, apparently, uh, what was happening is that he was encountering uh, the Lord Jesus and he was speaking to the Lord Jesus. So you can imagine you know, Jesus was in front of him. And at the same time, suddenly when this encounter was going on, he saw that uh, uh, a creature, something like a little uh, naughty monkey, jumped in between Jesus and him and started jumping you know, all over the place, started jumping all over the place. So he was disturbed in the, uh, as he was seeing this vision and having this encounter, he was like, uh, what is going on? You know, here I am with Jesus and Jesus is speaking his valuable words of life to me. And this little monkey is jumping all over the place. So he waited for a while and he didn't know what to do. And finally, he told Jesus, he said, uh, Lord, uh, what, can you not see that uh, uh, our meeting is being interrupted? Why can't you command this uh, monkey to leave? Okay. And uh, apparently, uh, Jesus told him, you do it. It's your, it's, it's, it, it's your uh, responsibility. You do it. Okay. So basically, uh, he, he, he shared this to um, say how certain, certain things need to be done by us because God has already given us the authority. And of course, you know, this individual has also written a book on um, believers authority okay, in which he shares this example. And that moment he, he had the realization that, yeah, God has given me the authority to do certain things, which he is not that he cannot do it. He can, but he has already done the needful on the cross and he has given me the responsibility and the authority to do it now. And I'm supposed to do it. You know, I'm supposed to chase the devil uh, and stop the devil from uh, interfering and interrupting my life. And so he woke up to that reality and he talks about how you know, we have, been vested not we are not just talking about responsibility yes we all have responsibility you you tell me what if an organization sends us to uh, uh work somewhere okay uh, and they never give us the authority to do that okay for example if if you work in a uh, let's say a, a government office you work in the national government office and they tell you to go to a village okay and they go they tell and they tell you okay you go you question them on all these things so you're going to a village when you go to the village people ask you the question huh you have the responsibility to question us who sent you what authority do you have to ask us all these questions what if the government office never gave you a title or a badge or an ID card or an appointment letter. The government office just says, ah, okay, anybody, you go, you ask questions. You're going there with no authority, you can't do anything. But if you're going there with authority, you have all the right. If people ask you, yeah, it's your responsibility to ask questions, where is your authority? You just pull out your ID card, you just show them your uniform and say, hey, this is who I am. Here's my ID. Now, give me the answers. So the, God has not just given us responsibility. He has also vested us with authority. And that's the beauty of it. So when we are here living our lives on the earth, you know, we can live bold. We can live uh, victorious because we also have the authority. And there are certain uh, challenges that we may go through. But as I just shared, Jesus looks to us. 
and he says you do it okay and this is to every believer it's not just to the pastors the leaders uh, and you know people who are in certain positions but every believer jesus says you are victorious you can deal with the devil you can overcome temptation you can uh, cast out demons you can uh, speak and declare healing over people's lives i have given you the authority right so this is the reason why we must understand about authority when we understand then it gives us more courage to start using it okay so why should we learn about authority to put it uh, in a in a nutshell a couple of points one is we can uh, live victorious personal lives okay so that is the reason the second reason is we can overcome and we can dominate you know any sort of demonic disruption or disturbance as we already know that hey i have the authority and of course we can minister and serve others you know it's one thing for us to uh, only use this authority in a personal way for ourselves but we also realize that hey i can help somebody else okay you're going through uh, some challenges let me pray for you you're going through uh, some difficulties okay let's pray together let's agree together we will bind you know the the work of the enemy or uh, things like that let's press in okay so you you minister to someone else maybe even minister deliverance over their lives so we can also help somebody else uh, and we can exercise our authority for them as well so these are all reasons why we must learn about authority and you know if uh, it's not just about overcoming the evil one but also to just fulfill our god given uh, responsibility our purpose on the earth we need to know what kind of authority you and i carry right as children of god it gives us great confidence uh, to fulfill god's purpose for us so uh, that these are all reasons why we need to understand our authority now here is another question for us to consider this authority i've been saying that uh, jesus won the victory for us and so uh, through the cross we can overcome so is it that we have received authority only through the cross or did mankind have dominion and authority before that what do you think any any thoughts any views about it okay so jeffina says only through the cross okay great yeah anyone else uh, contrary views to that or oh, maybe okay. align to it yeah go ahead yeah. according to me when god created adam and eve he gave adam the dominion to rule oh. over the living creatures yes yes okay so uh selitoli uh, says that god gave adam when he created adam itself he gave them dominion okay so let's see let's see what uh, uh, the answer to this question is when did we get this authority did it come upon us after jesus uh, died for us or was it already there before that well when we look at uh, creation okay we go back to genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28 uh, can somebody read that passage please genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 28 Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 Then God said let's make human beings in our image to be like us they will ring over the fish in the sea the birds in the sky the livestock all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground So God created human beings in his own image in the image of God he created them male and female he created them Then God blessed them and said be fruitful and multiply fill the earth and govern it 
bring over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffina. So it's so clear, isn't it? So when God created man, obviously man and woman, he created uh, mankind in the image of God. And we see how he gave them authority. And the realm of authority also has been clarified. You know, the the everything, all, all the animals on the ground, in the sea, in the sky. So it was defined, the realm of authority that man had. So God said, you know, go subdue or uh, I give you the dominion. You have the power to overcome. You have the power to take care. So when he made uh, mankind caretakers of this earth, right, he gave dominion and authority. So originally, uh, that is what God had in mind, that man should live uh, victorious. Man should rule and reign over all the things of the earth. Now, let us also look at one more scripture here. This is uh, um, Psalm 115 and verse 16. Psalm 115, Can somebody please read that for us? Psalm chapter 115, verse 16. The heaven belongs to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, uh, Jafina. So do you notice here, God created man, or let's say mankind, with dominion and authority. And here is the allocation. Okay. He, it's like the heavens belong to the Lord, but... Who does the earth belong to? Belongs to us. Now, it's like we have been given responsibility. Now, if you take, for example, a house which has been rented out to tenants, the people who live there as tenants, they are given the authority over that house. Now, if they don't keep their home clean, or if uh, they end up breaking you know, some portion of the wall, or worse still, if they don't uh, stay protected and you know, people come and uh, um, steal, create havoc in that house, do we call the owner and complain? Or do we talk to the tenant? Obviously, we will talk to the tenant and say, hey, it is your responsibility. The owner has given you the keys. You are responsible to take care of this house. You are responsible for the cleaning of the house. You are responsible for the protection of the property of this house. You are responsible for, uh, you know, to, to uh, prevent anyone from uh, barging into your house. So in this manner, we also understand that God gave the earth to man. And said, the earth belongs to you. You are given dominion, authority, responsibility, stewardship. It is your responsibility. You take care. You subdue. You rule and reign. So that is the original intention with which God created mankind. And God gave the earth to man. You saw that? Psalm 105 verse 16. The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth is given to mankind. So we are responsible for the earth here. And we have to take authority over the earth. Okay. So uh, that is how we understand you know, the authority that God has given man. So basically, when God created man and the descendants, uh, God completely qualified mankind as uh, the caretakers or managers of this earth. And his expectation was that, you know, man would do a good job. So we also see here that uh, 
uh, man you know one one of the one of the things that is described is man is made in the image of god so what is that image what is that image of god you know that image of god uh, it, it it is like god made man a thinking being so god gave man uh, an intellect god gave him the ability to reason god gave him a personality uh, he gave him every other ability you know to to perceive to hear to see to speak uh, to to basically have the characteristics of god and also the ability to reproduce okay uh, of his own kind so with all these abilities in the image of god god created man and god gave man know this uh this image or the likeness which also um, uh, involves the authority and dominion that he handed over to man so he wanted man to really take care of the world so in one sense you can say that uh, we were or mankind was divinely appointed and empowered to exercise god's authority here on the earth we were appointed to execute god's government here on the earth we were the ones who were authorized to protect god's property here on the earth and um, you know we as the ones who were created in his image how how can we do this yes we have been given the dominion but also you know to walk with god to uh, come under his authority first and be subject to him and these are all uh, this is what god's original expectation of man really was okay but uh, we know, you know the fall happened and uh, then jesus had to come to to set it all right and that's how things uh, went on from there so what we'll do is since we are running out of time uh, on our first session we will pause right now uh, uh, any any thoughts any questions on whatever we've discussed so far believers authority we've we've talked about that why should we study about authority we've discussed that and now we are uh, looking at the fact that god originally wanted man to have dominion and authority along these lines any uh, additional thoughts questions Okay, Zeri Toli says all clear. And that's good. That's good to know. Okay, so fine. Uh, in in that case, uh, we could uh, go in for a ten minute break, and then we come back. So you don't really have to log off the call. Just uh, you know, stay muted, um, and uh, we will connect back at eleven. Okay, eleven eleven a.m. So see you all do soon, and we will continue from where we stopped. Thank you, everybody.